Hello, welcome to the course trailer for Telehealth Law and Policy, uh, Law 580D and 480D. Uh, I am Professor Tara Sklar. I, I designed this course and I am so excited to tell you a little bit about uh, both what it covers as well as my own personal um, interest in the area. Um, at Arizona Law, I'm the faculty director of our Health Law and Policy program. Uh, and I also have appointments at the College of Medicine uh, here in, in Tucson um, with the Arizona Telemedicine Program focusing on telehealth law and policy and with the University of Arizona Health Sciences Innovations for Healthy Aging, looking at um, a lot of what I look at in my research and writing is the intersection between um, older populations using health technology um, outside of the um, traditional hospital healthcare clinic. And what we'll do, well, so we'll, we will discuss that in this course, along with just in general, how this whole area of healthcare is evolving and changing um, through telehealth and other virtual care options and where the law and policies at both the federal, state, and also at local levels um, can help advance that or act as barriers, which is basically the um, meat of the course. But I will describe that in more detail um, as you hear about our, our six-week journey that we go on um, every summer. So uh, essentially, um, at the beginning of the course, uh, we're going to talk about the landscape for telehealth law and policy, uh, the role that um, how it differs in terms of your particular stakeholder perspective, whether you're a patient caregiver, a payer, meaning from a um, insurance provider or a healthcare provider, and how um, telehealth has really evolved during the public health emergency and, and now going forward um, in terms of each one of these perspectives and where they would like to see it go um, going forward. So general landscape, and then we'll get into some really uh, uh, critical issues in terms of potential disadvantaged population groups being left behind. Um, I, I put in addressing digital health equity, equity at the very um, top of what we cover because so often that's left off until the very end that you begin thinking about well, what about folks who are homebound and just can't get to a hospital or those who are undocumented and very uncomfortable um, sharing information about themselves online and how that may impact their access to care. So we cover those issues and others in, in module two, and then think about particularly these disadvantaged groups as we discuss um, more policy topics like reimbursement and oversight with topics like uh, licensure and uh, privacy and security regarding your healthcare data. So, so after we talk about general what healthcare equity is in this new virtual care space, begin to think about um, how we should pay for telehealth. Should it cost less to provide virtual care services compared to in-person services? Uh, should it be the case that only some services um, are covered equally as with in-person but not others? Uh, services that are high in demand, such as behavior health, should that receive what they call parity, payment parity, the same for in-person, or should that just be guaranteed to have some kind of coverage um, and not the same? So it's there's, there's all kinds of questions. There's a, an incredible amount of variation across the country when it comes to reimbursement between what's uh, reimbursed for in-person care versus telehealth services, and then certain types of telehealth services, such as if you're only on the phone or if you're live audio video, or if you're using some kind of wearable or remote monitoring device, it can all vary greatly uh, depending on what state you're in, in terms of how that uh, service will be reimbursed. So the law plays a huge role, and then that's kind of this really fascinating time that we'll get into in modules uh, four through six, uh, the remaining um, half of the course, when really what is the optimal role for federal and states to play in this area to ensure that there's there's access, including for all those uh, disadvantaged groups that, I, that I've touched on that um, costs don't continue to go high, that there's some controls to prevent against fraud and abuse, um, and also some guarantees or um, ways to ensure that there's quality of care or patient safety. So we're looking at all those issues um, in weeks four and five, and we sort of end with the idea, well, going forward, how should we adjust the law or not to begin to um, accommodate uh, more virtual care options, and then what does this mean for in-person care going forward? So um, that's what we cover over the six-week period. Um, 
a lot of uh, informing you what's currently in the space in terms of laws, regulations, and policies, and then where how they're evolving. Lots of different states are doing acting in different ways, and and what may happen going forward. So uh, by the end of this course, you're going to be able to identify, explain, analyze, and apply the different laws and policies we're going to be looking at. And I hope that you're going to come up with some really creative, dynamic recommendations. Um, and then and in doing so, thinking about it from particular population groups, whether it's an uh, insurance payer, a regulator, a patient, a particular kind of patient, um, uh, different regions, uh, particularly rural areas where, you know, virtual care has played a, has historically continues to play um, a very outsized role. And, um, and not just, you know, at the moment, but going forward three, five, ten years from now, what what is this space going to look like? So I've tried to make it as exciting um, and engaging as possible through a range of different resources. You won't just have, you won't just be required to read long articles, but rather um, there are a number of videos that are assigned, including some introduction modules from me at the start of each week, along with what's happening and at um, major conferences and webinars in this area. And then um, some reading, but not, but not all articles, some from news outlets, policy briefs. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of information that's from credible sources that I'd like to expose you to. And then, and then a little bit of um, websites and playing, playing around if you were to plug in information uh, what would what would the outcome be and, and some podcasts. So a range of tools to really help you stay engaged with the course material. Also, um, importantly, a range of assessment types. So each week um, you do respond to a discussion board post. I've, I've tried to make them um, as potentially personal or professionally, professionally meaningful as possible based off what you'll be either watching or reading um, in those in that during that week. Um, the other way you'll be assessed is through this idea of a short essay called a sharp, a short, um, a short hypothetical applied role play. Um, where uh, we have them in two different weeks looking at digital equity and also at um, the role of uh, professional licensing boards um, and, um, and how they can ensure patient safety as, as well as access to care from out-of-state providers. So um, two short essays there. And then lastly, and this is sort of the overarching idea behind this course, is a uh, essentially what is a six-week research project where you start in the very beginning, thinking about an overall topic and outline of your choosing. I'll work with you to uh, uh, refine it, reiterate it, go through a first draft and a second draft until you have your final paper. So something, so a topic within this area that you'd really like to know more about, um, I absolutely encourage to have a, a very uh, substantial, meaningful product at the end of the course. So this course, um, Telehealth on Policy, is part of the Health Information Privacy Compliance and Data Security Certificate. We have a number of other courses in health information technology um, and I and biomedical informatics. I encourage you to go to the link um, and look at any other topics that may interest you in that area. And then these courses can be applied to a, this certificate, and that can then be applied to a master's of legal studies or if you are already in a another degree here at the U of A, whether it's your JD or PharmD or um, MBA, MHA, you can um, hopefully apply the credits from this course and others towards that degree. Um, and I also very much encourage you to join our overall health law and policy community where we have regular events, um, mostly virtual, but also in person, increasingly so in Tucson, Phoenix, and where I am based in Washington, D.C., and, um, and we also have a number of course trailers, such as this one, where you can really get a sense of the instructor, what will be covered in the course bef before you sign up. So with that, I would love to see you in my class, Telehealth Law and Policy, offered every summer, um, and any other classes within the Health Law and Policy portfolio you might be interested in. Um, you have the an email to law.healthcare at arizona.edu to please uh, contact us if, with any questions if you need help with registering and my, and my own personal as well, a personal email as well. So I look forward to hearing from you and, um, and thank you for your time.